Water is obviously a very important molecule for living organisms. It makes up the majority of a human body or an animal body and a plant body as well. And it is the vast majority of what we have inside of a single cell. So it is important to understand some specific properties of water. Water we've drawn its uh, molecular formula and structural formula a number of times already. So when we say H2O, that is the molecular formula. The molecular formula is going to tell us which elements are involved and how many atoms we have of each one. And then this other formula that I've drawn over here, this is what we call the structural formula. The structural formula is nice because it gives us a little bit more detail and it tells us exactly where my covalent bonds are formed and then we can easily tell whether these are going to be single covalent bonds, um, double, triple, anything like that. So with the water molecule, if we do look at it in the structural form, we do have two single covalent bonds but these also happen to be polar covalent bonds because those electrons are going to be held much closer to the oxygen atom. And that has to do with the fact that oxygen is more electronegative or stronger than hydrogen is. So the end result of this is that this end of the water is always going to be a little bit negative and these ends, the hydrogen ends, are always going to be a little bit positive. If we draw um, quick water molecules, a lot of times we draw them as just a little V because they are bent molecules. And the pointed end would represent the oxygen end and the other ends would represent my hydrogens. So when we do draw something like this and we're representing water molecules, we want to understand that the pointy end, that's my negative area, and then these two areas would be my positives. Now, water is a very good, what we call solvent. So it does a really good job of dissolving different things. We take a few moments to talk about this ability of water to dissolve different things and where it comes from. It really does have to do with the fact that my water molecule has those two opposite ends to it. And whenever we have a molecule that has these two opposite ends, we can call it a polar molecule. So water is a polar molecule. Now, one thing about charges is that opposites attract. And you've probably heard opposites attract before, so hopefully that's something that you can remember. So what this means is that the positive end is going to be attracted to something negative. And a lot of times, Okay, if we think about this, we don't just have one water molecule, we actually have a whole bunch of them. So if I were to draw several of them here, notice the way that I am arranging them. I'm arranging them so that the positive of one is next to the negative of the other. And water molecules can actually interact with each other like this, and we have a name for this bond type that they're forming. Now this isn't going to be a covalent bond because we're not sharing electrons, but this will be what we call a hydrogen bond. And hydrogen bonds, obviously they do involve some hydrogen. So remember that these little positive ends, they are hydrogen atoms that are there. But it's when you have a hydrogen atom and it's already connected in one molecule and it happens to be attracted to another atom and that attraction is based on the fact that they've got kind of these opposite charges around them. So positives are gonna be attracted to negatives here. So water molecules can interact like that, but they can also dissolve a lot of compounds based on that property. So let's look at an example of this. What I'm drawing here, this is going to be what we call an ionic compound. And it's an ionic compound because it is made up of two ions. These ions have opposite charges. So one of them, actually let me draw this in black, one of them is going to be chlorine, which has a negative charge, and the other one's going to be sodium, which has a positive charge. And so this is what we call sodium chloride, and this is what you also know as salt. So this would be the normal salt that you put on your food. So these two are attracted to each other. So they have this little attraction between them, and that is another type of bond. That's what we call an ionic bond. 
But if we take a grain of salt, it's going to be made up of a bunch of these interacting with each other. If we take this and we throw it in a glass of water, we already know that salt dissolves in water. Now, if we talk about why the salt dissolves in water, what's actually going to happen here is that in this glass, so this is my little glass here, in this glass, we have a lot of those little water molecules. Okay, so they're floating around. And rem remember what the two ends of my V stand for. Well, if you think about the fact that this pink sodium here has a positive charge, that means that the negative end of the water molecule is going to be very interested in that sodium atom. So it is going to actually surround the sodium atom so much that eventually it really bumps it right off of the chlorine atom. So you'll end up with, um, if we just drew this over here, what it's gonna look like after all of this, we're going to have that sodium, which is not even anywhere close to the, the chlorine, and the sodium is going to be just surrounded by waters. So this little um, surrounding that we have, that's what we call a hydration shell or a hydration sphere. Now the chlorine, we can have essentially the same thing happen with the chlorine, but now we're dealing with a negative charge. So if we're dealing with a negative charge, it's the other end of the water molecule that's going to be interested in it, such that when all is said and done, in this case, now we have um, a chlorine that is going to be surrounded by the other end of the water molecule. So now this is what we see down here. Okay, so notice in both cases what the water molecule did. Water is going to surround ions by orienting itself so that opposite charges are next to each other. Okay, so that's how we would actually dissolve various ions in water. Um, water can dissolve ions. Okay, so if we have ions or what we would call ionic compounds, which would be something like the salt where you have um, a positively charged ion and a negatively charged ion that are attracted to each other, um, they're gonna dissolve very well in water because water is just going to surround those individual ions by orienting itself appropriately. Something else that can dissolve well in water is going to be a polar molecule. And polar molecules are going to be dissolved essentially the same way. So here I'm gonna draw a very simple polar molecule. This is a nitrogen that is surrounded by three hydrogens. Nitrogen was one of those atoms that's very strong and hydrogen is very weak. So when we look at where the electrons are at, they're going to be shifted much closer to the nitrogen end. So charge-wise, if we wanted to label where we have um, our negative charge, it's gonna be right here around the nitrogen, and we're gonna have little areas of positive around the hydrogens. And so what the water molecule is going to do is essentially the same thing that it did with the ions. It's going to surround this molecule by orienting itself so that we have opposite charges next to each other. So wherever you have these hydrogens, we would have the pointy end of the V, so we would have something like this. And then if we can squeeze an, a water in here, okay, it would be something like this. It would be a tight squeeze in this case. But hopefully you're getting the idea where water can just, it has the two different sides. So no matter what the charge is on the ion or on the polar molecule in this case, water is gonna be able to coat the surface of that pretty well. And if we can kind of surround this, molecule or coat the surface of it with a hydration shell, then this is gonna be something that's going to dissolve well in water. So molecules that dissolve well in water, these are going to be what we call hydrophilic molecules. Hydrophilic molecules um, or hydrophilic substances, they dissolve in water 
And these are going to be things that either are charged or polar. And polar things have charged areas to them. So water likes to interact with other things based on charges, either real charges or just these little areas of charge. So that's what hydrophilic substances are. Now, if we happen to have something that does not have any charges on it, so if we drew another molecule here, if you had something like the methane that we've already drawn, so in this case we have um, electrons being shared down the middle, which means we have four nonpolar covalent bonds. There is no charges. This is a very neutral surface. So when you have water around this, the water molecules would rather just interact with each other rather than get near this methane. So this is what we would end up with. The water molecules are going to hang out together over here and they're not going to be next to this uh, molecule that doesn't have any charges that they can interact with. So we have a name for that as well and that would be what we call hydrophobic. So hydrophobic molecules are non-charged, they don't have real charges, they don't have a lot of little areas of charge, and these are also going to have a lot of nonpolar 